Welcome back to Huawei Routing and Switching Elite Training. Today topic we are going to discuss on VLAN. Let's start our part 7. Now let's look into the uh, VLAN troubleshooting. All right. So uh, here we have some of the uh, troubleshooting um, checking that you need to look into assuming that if you have some VLAN communication problem. Now the user complained that they cannot communicate with each other. So what are the first thing that you need to check? First, you need to check whether the interface connected to the user are in upstate or not. So how do you do that is the display VLAN. Because when you do the inter uh, display VLAN, if you can see that is U means it's up, is D means it's down. All right, so that's the first thing that you need to do. Now second, check whether the IP address of the user interface on the same network segment or not. Alright, so sometimes uh, the user are actually getting the DHCP and there's a wrong configuration on DHCP or if it's a static, make sure that the VLAN and the IP mapping is correct. Alright, so that's the second thing that you need to check. Third, check whether the MAC address entry and the switch are correct. So assuming that now you have a switch over here and here we have the user. So you do a IP config slash ALL and check what is the MAC address. So the MAC address on here and when you do a display MAC address over here are supposed to be the same. Okay, so if it's not the same then you need to know uh, why it's not the same. Now the other one here is to check whether the VLAN configuration is correct. Alright, so here we have a few things that you need to check. Check whether VLAN has been created. So uh, do a display VLAN. Check whether the interface are added to the VLAN. So assuming that you are using the inter interface based VLAN and check whether the interface and user terminal are correctly connected. So again, do a display VLAN. So these are the common configuration that you should uh, look into. Another one is to check if you have the MUX VLAN. All right, because if you do have a MUX VLAN, uh, that is intentionally user to user are not supposed to communicate. So that is a feature and that is not a problem. All right, so make sure that uh, do you have any MUX VLAN or not. And finally, check whether the correct static ARP entry are configured on the user terminal. Now, on certain circumstances, some of the hosts, they do configure the ARP statically. All right, rather than dynamic. If you are not using dynamic and you are using a static, make sure that the static uh, up entry is correct, correctly configured, else the user will not able to communicate from one PC to another PC, assuming that all other configuration is correct. All right, so uh, now we are looking into the uh, VLAN case analysis and let's look into case number one. This time we look into the company B. All right, so company B have this requirement. So altogether we have four requirement. Configure VLAN aggregation on S1 here. All right, and configure VLAN 4 as a super VLAN. So VLAN 4 is the super VLAN. All right, so the sub VLAN is VLAN 2 and 3. Okay, that's the first requirement. Second requirement is to configure interface VLAN on S3 to implement communication between 10 and 11. So we are going to configure interface VLAN 10 and interface VLAN 11. So that will be uh, the uh, switch number three. Next, we configure VLAN to allow by a trunk. So here is our trunk. All right, to allow the uh, VLAN to pass through. And lastly, we are going to configure RIP so that uh, VLAN to VLAN will able to communicate. All right, so altogether we have three switches as well as four PC and we are going to achieve all these requirements. All right, so let's jump into our lab now. So this is our first requirement, configure VLAN aggregation on switch one and configure VLAN four as the super VLAN. All right, so let's go to our configuration now and uh, we are going to configure the uh, switch number one all right so we have a vlan 2 and vlan 3 that's our sub vlan and vlan 4 will be our super vlan that's a requirement so let's configure the vlan batch to 
to 4. Okay, so VLAN 4 is our aggregate aggregate VLAN and our sub VLAN is 2 and 3. Okay, so that will be the first thing we need to configure. Second, secondly, we have to configure the uh, VLAN 4, the uh, interface VLAN with the IP address of 1.1.1.10. Okay, so that will be on the uh, VLAN 4, right? So I have here 1.1.1.1 and 1.1.1.2. All right, remember that the uh, aggregate VLAN is to save IP address. Okay, and uh, very important, we have to do up proxy inter sub VLAN proxy enable. Next, we go to the interface. So here we have 001. Let's belong to VLAN 2. So let's go to the 001 port link type access and port default VLAN 2. 002 interface. So we have our port link type access and port default VLAN number 3 okay so when we do a display super VLAN all right so VLAN number 4 is our super VLAN 2 and 3 is a sub VLAN and when we do a display sub VLAN so VLAN 2 and 3 is a sub VLAN and VLAN 4 is a super VLAN so let me go into client 1 and try to ping to my super VLAN which is 1.1.1.10 okay that's my super VLAN and uh, I'll also will go into VLAN 3 here ping to 1.1.1.10 that's also working and I'm going to ping from client 2 which is 1.1.1.2 I'm going to ping to 1.1.1.1 that is pinging between VLAN 2 and uh, VLAN 3 all right that's also working. So that will be our first requirement. All right, so requirement number two is to create the uh, interface on S3, which is here, to implement communication between VLAN 10 and VLAN 11. All right, so we just have to go to the uh, switch number three to create the interface VLAN. All right, so jump back to our uh, configuration and uh, let's go to switch number three so switch number three we have a vlan 10 and a vlan 11 all right so let's configure the uh, vlan batch 10 and 11 okay and uh, here i have the vlan 10 having an ip address of 1133 okay and 11310 is my uh, gateway Okay, and here on client 4, I have 1144 and 11410 is my gateway. So the gateway in this case is my interface VLAN. So let's jump back to switch number 3. And I'm going to configure my interface VLAN 10. And interface VLAN 10 is 113.10. Okay, and interface VLAN 11. The IP address is 1.1.4.10 slash 24. Next, I just have to configure the uh, port number 3 and 4 into the respective VLAN interface. Ethernet 003, port link type, that will be on SS, port default, VLAN 10. Okay, then I'll jump to Ethernet 004, port link type access, and that will be VLAN 11. Display VLAN 10 to 11. There you go. So we have three, uh, that's a port 3, that's up, and that's a VLAN 10, and port 4, that's also up, that's a VLAN 11 okay and when i do a display ip interface brief i should able to see both so let's do a ping between 10 and 11 so i'm going to ping to 1144 
OK. So let me ping to 1.1.4.4. That's in PC4. And when I do a trace, OK, 1.1.4.4, you should pass through the switch. That's correct. So here we have the uh, second requirement. Alright, so on the requirement tree, this should be quite simple to configure VLAN allowed by a trunk link. So the trunk link between S1 and S2, so we have a VLAN 2 and VLAN 3. But remember that uh, both PC1 and PC2 may need to communicate with uh, VLAN 10 and 11. So we have to allow VLAN 2, 3, 10 and 11 on both sides. Alright, so let's jump back to our uh, switch. So let's go into switch number one here and uh, we are going to make sure that we will allow the VLAN to pass through. Okay. And that will be on the interface 0010. All right. So we have a VLAN batch of 10 and 11. Okay. Display VLAN. So we have 2, 3, 10, 11. 2, 3, 10, 11. Okay, that's correct. So we go into the interface Ethernet 0010, port link type trunk, and we are going to do a port trunk, allow VLAN 2, 3, 10, 11. Okay, display this. So we have the uh, switch 1 configured. So I'm going to configure switch 3 now. Okay, so again, VLAN batch. I have already 10, 11. I need to configure 2 and 3. Then, as usual, I go to the interface Ethernet 0, 0, 20. Okay. Then I'm going to configure the port link type as trunk. And the port trunk allow pass VLAN is 2, 3, 10, 11. All right, so switch one and switch three already configured, so I need to configure switch number two. So for switch number two, I'm going to configure the VLAN batch. All right, I have two, three, ten, and eleven. Then I will go into the uh, interface ten and twenty. All right, so both will be the same configuration. Ethernet zero zero ten. Then I'm going to configure port link type trunk and port trunk allow pass VLAN 2, 3, 10, and 11. Okay, so that is the uh, configuration. Okay. All right, so let me double confirm again. Interface E0010. Interface Ethernet. Okay, so that is on 10. Display this. All right, so I think that I misconfigured that. Let's see here. All right, uh, okay. I actually configured the port link type. All right, so my mistake here. Never mind. So we just continue here. I redo this part. Port link type trunk and port trunk allow pass. VLAN to 3, 10, 11. Okay. Let me undo the terminal monitor first. All right. Then I go to the Ethernet 0, 0, 020. And I do a port link type trunk. And a port trunk allow pass VLAN to 3, 10, 11. Now, if I do a display current, uh, just to verify, that is on the 10 here. There's the trunk port, and there's my VLAN. And on the port number 20, that's also correct. So now, I have the uh, complete configuration. So just to make sure that we have the correct configuration, you can do a display port VLAN. All right, that's my trunk here. That's my trunk, that's on switch two. And uh, display port VLAN that will be on interface Ethernet 10. That's correct. And on the switch number 3, display port VLAN, that's on port number 20. That's also correct. So that will be on the requirement number 3. 
Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel.